Okay, so so in this lecture, we're going to kind of talk about the pre-Columbian societies, right? Revisiting these these narratives. So in, in this video, the history of the Americas before Christopher Columbus came here in, in 1492, right? We, we all remember the, uh, the, the little ditty, right? The little poem or whatever it was. In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Well, so, so the history of the Americas before the arrival of Christopher Columbus in 1492 is a really rich history, but it's also very complex, marked by, by advanced civilizations, diverse cultures, and very sophisticated societal organization. Now, the indigenous people of America, whose ancestry traces back to, to, to migrations from Asia across the Bering Land Bridge, you know, uh, which we can talk a little bit about later, but the, their ancestry of the indigenous people traces back to migrations from Asia across this Bering Land Bridge, and, and they really developed a, a very broad, a, a wide array of social, political, and economic systems long before Europeans set foot on their land. So in this lecture, we're going to talk a little bit about the pre-Columbian era, the, the pre-Columbian societies, the challenges that, that the traditional historical narrative surrounding the European arrival has, and we're going to talk a little bit about the alternative view of early European contacts, including a few theories about pre-Columbian transoceanic interactions. So this is going to be quite an in-depth lecture, okay? So, so I want you to be ready to, um, to, to, to take some notes here, okay? So let's get into this just a little bit. So to start off here, we're going to talk about the origins a little bit. We're going to talk about the origins of the indigenous people. The, uh, the ancestors of indigenous peoples of America are believed to have migrated from Asia via the uh, Bering Sea, the land bridge, right? Now, this existed during the last ice age, okay? So over thousands of years, these people spread across the Americas, right? Giving the rise to a multitude of cultures, languages, civilizations, all this stuff from nomadic tribes of the Great Plains to very advanced empires like the Aztecs, the Mayas, the Incas that were very common in Central and South America. And there's even some thought that the Mayans could have been in the United States, in Georgia. Now, academics generally don't like this, but there's a lot of history that, that could lend to this theory um, and we can talk about Mayan blue and all, all this other stuff later on. But this is really important to remember. So as people came over from Asia via the, the Bering Sea land bridge, right? During the last ice age, this was over thousands of years. People went across the Americas. They created cultures, languages, and civilizations that ranged from the very nomadic tribes of like Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa, those places, to very advanced empires like the Aztecs, the Mayans, the Incas, and, and people like that in Central and South America. So, so let's not lose thought about that. That's kind of a 30,000 foot overview, if you will, of, of where they came from, okay? So now we're going to move into just a little bit of discussion here on life before the European arrival. What was it like before the Europeans arrived here? So pre-Columbian societies, the indigenous people, as I mentioned before, were very diverse. They were very sophisticated. And in North America, societies ranged from the mound builders in the Mississippi River Valley, okay, to cliff-dwelling cliff Pueblonians, right, out in the West. 
So in Central and South America, the Mayans developed a really complicated writing system. And, and they made very significant discoveries when it came to things like astronomy and stuff like this. The Aztecs and the Incas, they constructed empires. Okay, they, they created huge civilizations. So keep in mind that in the, and I'm going to repeat this, you had the mound builders in the Mississippi River Valley, the cliff dwellers in the western U.S., and in Central and South America, you had the Incas, the Mayas, the Aztecs, people like that. These societies had very complicated hierarchies within their society. They had really advanced agriculture techniques. They had very detailed uh, trade networks. And, and their spiritual and cultural practice were deeply ingrained into their daily life. And they had a really profound respect for the natural world. Okay? So these were very sophisticated people, very complicated people, before the Europeans arrived. Okay? They had things already in place long before 1492 when Columbus sailed the ocean blue. But then in 1492, in walks the Europeans. Okay, so enter the Europeans, Christopher Columbus. The arrival of Europeans marked the beginning of a really devastating period for indigenous people. The Europeans brought diseases, displacement, a lot of violence. This was bad for the indigenous people of the Americas then. So contrary to the this benign encounter narrative that, that we teach in schools these days, the first contacts with Europeans that the indigenous people had were, they were tense. There was a lot of conflict there and diseases like smallpox to which the indigenous people, you know, they had no immunity to. Smallpox and these other diseases really decimated these communities. And they eradicated populations even before many of the communities directly encountered Europeans. Sound familiar? Didn't we just go through something like that? But deeper than that, the societal, the political, and the, the economic structures of the indigenous people were undermined by European contact. The indigenous people that were here, they had alliances and trade agreements that, that had already been in place for years. And they were often ignored or they were exploited by the newcomers, by Columbus and, and his newcomers, right? These people came in to impose their own system of governance and trade often through coercion and force. So, do you, do you see where this is going? Okay. Do you, do you see where we're at with this? So, so now I want to talk a little bit about this. Some alternative theories of pre-Columbian contact. So, so here we're going to challenge the mainstream historical narrative. We're going to challenge this. Some of the theories suggest that groups like the, the, the Knights Templar and even earlier civilizations like the Welsh could have discovered America hundreds of years before Columbus. So proponents of these theories, people who agree with them, they argue that, that artifacts such as the, the Kensington runestone and stories of uh, Prince Madoc's uh, uh, voyage indicate that, that pre-Columbian transatlantic contact happened years before this. Now, these theories, academics will argue that they're controversial and they're often met with a lot of skepticism by mainstream historians due to the lack of, of concrete evidence. But despite the speculative nature of these claims, 
they serve to highlight the potential complexity of, of pre-Columbian history and the possibility of earlier somewhat unproven interactions between the old war world and the new world. Okay. So to think about this, you have to give some credit to like the Kensington runestone, right? You have to give some credit because they did establish economies. They established trade routes. They established all these different things. And it could be that the Welsh specifically were there already working with the, uh, the, 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 the native people of America, the indigenous people long before Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the societal organization and this European contact. So indigenous societies, they, they were organized in a lot of different ways from the, the theocratic empires in Mesoamerica to confederacies and, and chiefdoms in North America. These, these societies had their own methods of governance, trade, and conflict resolution. Now, they were often d disrupted, and once the Europeans arrived here, they, they were largely disregarded. Okay? These people had societies that were already established, and they had rules that were already well established well before the Europeans arrived. So the narrative of a, a welcoming kumbaya moment, the first contact, is really a simplification that overlooks the immediate impacts of European arrival. This, this simplified kumbaya moment of you know, how the Europeans found the new world and the, the indigenous people welcomed them with open arms, it, it, it's not true. There were acts of violence, they brought diseases with them, and they killed off the indigenous populations that were well established here on the Americas long before, long before Columbus sailed the ocean blue. So, so now that we're thinking about this, let's talk about this. Fast forward through all of the, the complicated things that happened, like the diseases, the, the, the wars, the conflicts and things that happened. Ultimately, the Europeans won out. Okay, Columbus won out, right? He, they were able to destroy everything that these ancient civilizations had ever created. And then they moved into the colonial period of America. So as the colonial period began, you could see traces, remnants of these once thriving societies who were forced to adapt to a what? What do we call it? A new world order. European colonizations, they didn't just reshape the geographic and political landscape of the Americas, but they also marked the beginning of a dark period of oppression a lot of cultural problems and, and really a resistance towards the indigenous people. So this transition to the colonial era was complicated because it was a stolen civilization. So now I, I want to leave you with some, some concluding thoughts here and some questions that I want you to to kind of think about, okay? The pre-Columbian era of the Americas challenges us to reconsider our understanding of history and the narratives that, that we've been taught. It prompts a lot of questions, a whole lot of questions. Like, how, how can our perception of American history change if we fully acknowledge the sophistication and the diversity of the pre-Columbian societies. What can we learn from examining the alternative theories of pre-Columbian contact, even if they challenge well-established historical consensus that fits the American narrative? If we dive into the, the colonial period, 
we, we have to ask ourselves how the legacy of these early encounters continues to shape the American society today. I think that in reevaluating the, the pre-Columbian era, we're reminded of, of the importance of questioning and expanding our historical perspectives to include the voices and experience of those who have often been marginalized in the traditional uh, American narrative. So I hope that kind of explains a little bit to you about the pre-Columbian era and I know that was just kind of a brief overview, but hopefully you have a little bit better thought process as we move on to the next video, the, pre -colo uh, the uh, colonial era of America.